What's up cooks? On the show today, we're going to do a product test and review of the Smeg Stand Mixer. Now this mixer is kind of unique because it has a little bit of a 50s retro style. It's made by an Italian company and a lot of us have been wondering about this mixer. I'm Amy and I am on a mission to become a better cook. Hit the subscribe button below to join me. Now, let's do a product test and review of the Smeg. So we're gonna judge the stand mixer on the same categories we have all our other stand mixers. So we're gonna be looking on the overall look and feel. That's the fit, the finish, how I kind of think that the styling is and the accessories. I'm also gonna use the whisk and we're gonna make some whipped cream. I'm gonna use the paddle and we're gonna make some cookies and we're gonna use a dough hook and make some bread dough. So first up, the overall look and feel. So Smeg is an Italian company that's been around since the 40s. So a lot of people see this mixer and they don't know too much about it. And they think that this is a mixer that's new on the scene. This is a new product, a newer product for Smeg, but Smeg has been around for a long time and they make really high end major appliances. So dishwashers, refrigerators, and they're known for refrigerators with this unique 50s style. Their products tend to be on the very high end of the price point. This mixer is no exception. You will find this mixer at four and $500. I happened to have grabbed it on a great deal on Amazon one day for about half price. And it was only available in this color. It comes in white and pink and green and blue and red. And I actually would have preferred a pink one or a white one, but this is what I got and I wasn't gonna pay double the price just for that. Cause I, I like the silver as well. So what do you guys think about this mixer? It is really funky. Now the big question that everybody has about this mixer automatically when they hear it is it has a very unfortunate name, right? Um, the only thing I can say about that is SMEG is an acronym for a machine works company in Italy and it has their city's name in it. So the G is the name of the city and I will not even attempt to pronounce what the full name is. If you don't like the acronym, then call it the full name. You know, it's kind of an interesting mixer. And it's kind of sad that someone would look at that and say, oh, I don't like the name because it's just an acronym. And the unfortunateness of the name came after the company was founded and was already known by that. So that's just all I have to say about its unfortunate name. People need to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think about this mixer? The first time I put a picture of this mixer up in my Facebook group, someone said it looked like the baby Hindenburg, right? And I think the other colors don't look so Hindenburg-like. Um, kind of looks like a mini a mini me of a Hobart, right? Cause they tend to have this big head on them. Um, this mixer, it has a little thing here that says 50s style. So the design of this was made in conjunction with some architects and it is in line with their whole product line of their sort of 50 style refrigerators that they're really known for. So this is your speed control. Let me plug it in. <laughs> and I'll put on, this is how you lift the mixer head. So there's a button back here and you just click that and you lift the mixer head. It comes with your standard 
pouring shield. My initial thoughts of the pouring shield is this chute here is very narrow. And I think this pouring shield would be a little difficult to use because of that. Um, it has your standard uh, beater, your whisk, your beater paddle, and your dough hook. So I will go ahead, let me put the paddle on here. And we'll go ahead and put this down. And this is your speed dial. overly loud. I think it's a really funky design. I really like the design. To me the bowl is a little lightweight feeling for a mixer in this price range but it does have a really nice big handle that allows you a lot of you know use when you're trying to pour and all that stuff. I think this bowl is a little lightweight but that might be you know, some people might prefer that. I think it has a very sleek design with a really nice design under the mixer head. I think it's really well thought out. And um, the only concern I have is in here where this lever is, this has a gap in here where this thing slides up and down. And I just know that I can get stuff down in here and possibly screw up this lever. I'm very concerned about that. That's what it looks like down in there. So there's a possibility that if you get up here with goopy hands or you get flour down there, I mean, this is kind of a recipe for a disaster to me. So I've only used this mixer twice so far. And what I've done is make sure I have really clean hands or I keep a towel next to me when I'm using this lever because I don't want anything that's on my hands to get down in here. I'm just very careful about anything in this area, particularly flour or anything else. So the mixer also has a hub on the front and they do have attachments. They have pasta makers uh, and all kinds of fun stuff for this. So not as extensive obviously as KitchenAid, but it does have those options for you because there is a hub on there and they do have quite a few attachments that goes with this mixer. So this is a five quart mixer with 600 watts of power. Woohoo, right? So my opinion of the overall look and feel. I really give it to Smeg. I think this, ha this is a really funky mixer. And if you are into sort of the retro look of it, or you have other Smeg appliances, this goes lot right along with it. If you want to get away from the traditional look of the KitchenAid and get something that's a little more, you know, non-traditional, but then retro, um, non-traditional in terms of what modern mixers are being made. Um, this is an interesting mixer. It's definitely a conversation piece for your kitchen. People will be like, I've never seen a stand mixer like that, right? Um, and for that, I think it's really, really neat. The concern for me is the pouring shield. I don't really particularly like it. And I think there's a major issue with stuff getting down this area. I'm just kind of concerned about that. But other than that, it's a funky mixer. So I give it an A minus. Okay, first up, we're doing the whisk. And I have two cups of heavy cream. Chilled. Chilled. We chilled the bowl and the whisk. Thank you, boo. And the measuring cup. And the measuring cup. And the measuring cup? Yeah, it all went outside. Wow. It is so cold outside, it's colder <laughs> than the refrigerator. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, 
looks like we might have something start going on. I'm going to put some powdered sugar in here and a little bit of vanilla. And we're going to finish it off. Okay, boo, I'll feed it to you. Here you go, boo. <laughs> um, light, fluffy, and creamy. Hi, boo. Yeah. <laughs> what part of the taste test? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> and it smells like whipped cream, too. <laughs> That's why. Oh, my boo loves me. She wants me to smell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my opinion of the mixer. At first, I thought it was a little slow. But it did come up, and it did get the job done. So, um, and it was fast. It was fast. It was fast? 30 seconds before you stopped the first time, and 30 seconds for the other part. I don't know why I thought it was a little slow, but no. I guess it's hard to judge time when you're sitting here watching it. So in that case, I give it an A. Okay, so we're doing the paddle. We're going to make some snickerdoodles this time. Ooh. So I have butter in the mixer. Room temperature? Yeah. <laughs> No scraper beater. That's one issue. And I doubt I doubt one is available. Definitely needs to scrape down. in some eggs. I love that. Something about a stand mixer. I mean, uh, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is. When a stand mixer starts, after you cream that butter and sugar and then you put a little egg in there, or a little uh, vanilla or something. It, it provides a little moisture for the sugar and the butter. And the mixer starts doing this. Right? And your batter starts looking like that. And it makes that noise. That's the stand mixer right the mixer channel 24 hours video <laughs> yeah of mixer action. 24 hours of mixers going around KitchenAid like has a certain sound to it like a classic KitchenAid sound I really get that sound from my Pro 500 I don't really get that sound from my Pro 600 because that thing I don't know it has more of a metal sound to it but I don't know, my Pro 500, and this gives a different sound, but it has that same look to it. Oof. That makes cooks go crazy, right? So I have my flour, salt, uh, baking powder, and cream of tartar. 
going to go ahead and give this a mix. Do I dare use this little narrow pouring shield? Hey, it's a test. Why not? One thing I can tell you, you can't slide it on like that with the KitchenAid because this part is too narrow. Not sure why they did that. Woo. Okay, wait a minute. You can't put it on with the beater on there either. Hmm. Wow. Couldn't hardly get it on there. Okay. So this thing is really narrow. So I'm gonna need a really narrow scoop. Like I said, I don't want to get anything down this thing. Yeah. Let's say goodbye to this silliness. <laughs> that lasted like two seconds. It kind of has that new motor smell to it. I don't know if that's the paint. Got it some bucking. Some bucking, Bronco. Yeah. We got some bucking. Hey, 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 we got some bucking. Cowboy ass? That you come mix with me. We got some bucking. Yeah, we got some bucking. We got some bucking. We got some bucking. Is that incorporated? Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a big dough ball to me. Looks like a dough ball. Uh -huh. So what was your user experience? What was my user experience? Were you just totally thrilled with the experience? Or was it a lot of work or somewhere in the middle? Well, it wasn't terrible. But it wasn't, it wasn't extraordinary. I mean, it did the job, didn't it? It did the job. Yeah. But you know, this a lot of places is a four or $500 telehead. Well, tell them to include a scraper beater then. Well, not only that, I mean, I don't think it really performs like that much better in that regard than any other, you know, more like mainstream tilt head. Um, I wasn't overly thrilled with, you know, I liked it until I put the flour in. And then it just got okay. So, I mean, should I judge that in light of the price? In light of the price, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, compared to other tilt heads, I think it's like just right in line with what they do. So, um, I give it a B. Okay, next up is the um, dough hook. We're going to be making some bread and we're going to be using like six cups of flour. This is going to be two loaves of bread. The, the manual said that this mixer can handle 1000 grams of AP flour or, or 800 grams of bread or whole wheat flour. So since we're using bread flour, we're going with six cups, which is well in the mixer's stated capacity. So we got some warm water here. 
We got a little bit of yeast. We got a little bit of food for the yeast. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick little stir. My yeast was in the refrigerator, so. So we're gonna go ahead and let this do its thing for about five minutes. Okay, sugar in. A little bit of canola oil. Canola. Canola. Okay, we're gonna rock and roll. We have some a lot of a, a lot of flour here, so we'll see what happens. See what happens, cooks. That's my extra flour. I think I need a smaller cup to get it in here. Yeah, because you're getting some on the front. It's kind of hard to get it in here. Put our salt in here. Got a little bit of popping around going on. And I got a lot of spinning too. Adjust this a little bit. It's, it's still very sticky. So let's see about giving us a little bit more flour. First, I thought it was spinning because it's dry, but still awfully sticky. It's just, it's really binding up on the beater. And the beater's just not moving it around. shape like it's got this big fan on the side like a wing and it's just not moving that dough around So let's run it, let it run and see if we can get it to develop some gluten. This dough hook is just completely wrong. Wrap 
your hands off then, Amy, if you're worried about... I'm getting, look at this, I'm not getting what I want out of this mixer. Truly, I'm not. This, it's not developing any kind of gluten whatsoever. Let me put a little bit more flour in here. To reduce the stickiness a little bit. lot of patience today so I'm gonna see if I can get some gluten to develop in this dough like I wanted right see what the artisan can do Look at that. Wow. Please find me a mixer that I can get to do anything. Let's get out get out a pro. You want a pro six? Yeah. Food 911, what's your emergency? I can't make any bread tonight. Have you tried another mixer? Yeah, I think they have the same problem. Do you have another one? Yeah. Well get it. Oh my gosh. I'm in tilt head. You know what, right now. <laughs> okay, so we're putting our dough into a Pro 600. Let's see if we can get some knead on this. Yeah. Well, the head's not bobbing, but the Pro 600 has a spiral dough hook, where these do not. So 
So see how the dough hook like goes around. See how it hits it right there, bam. It's coming around that spiralness of the dough hook is moving that dough around. Bread experience. How was it with the snake? Right? Horrible. I really felt like that was not grabbing and kneading it whatsoever. Bucking, the artisan. Bucking and spinning. The bucking, the spinning, and I mean, a tilt head is going to buck. That's just the fact of life. But the shape of that dough hook was just not right. The artisan bucking, a lot of grinding on the till head, but also I feel like the artisan is not made, the artisan has a C dough hook as opposed to a spiral, and I just don't think that this is efficient with that leader. The climbing up is Yeah. I mean, one of the things with the Pro 600 is, it has, if I can get it out of here, it has the spiral dough hook. I mean, look at that thing. So it has an opportunity to move around that dough and to move the dough where that C hook just doesn't and that, that smeg hook really doesn't. It smells like bread in here. Yeah, it's starting to develop. Mm. Okay, let's get this dough out on a board. Okay, so after going through three different mixers, we have some dough that I can actually use. Um, oh yeah. What do I even say about this? I really think that the smeg, the dough hook is a really bad design. I didn't get the kneading action. I have enough experience that I know why this thing is needing what I should expect and what I should be getting at it. I got a lot of spinning around. I just didn't think that it was moving the dough at all. I made it a little more sticky. I made it a little more dry a couple times back and forth. And I really couldn't get it to grab onto that dough and to get a decent knead. Um, the artisan, I got it to grab a little bit more on the dough, but the artisan, C hook doesn't, it just, I don't prefer it. And working on the head, the artisan was bouncing around. It was like feeling like it was metal to metal on that sucker going, ah, 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 right? Brought out the Pro, the Pro 600 and um, we could get the job done. So my opinion of the smeg on dough, it's a fail. I know you're all emotional here. Just take a deep breath. <sighs> all right. My final thoughts on the smeg. Um, the overall look and feel, it has a funky rec retro feel to it. And if you 
want that kind of design in your kitchen, maybe you have some other Smeg appliances, it matches back to that. In terms of the whisk and the cream, I think it did a great job. It did everything that we expected it. It whipped it up really fast and I gave it an A for that. Um, the paddle, I really thought that it did a great job up until I started putting that flour in there and it just, I don't know if it's half of me is like thinking about the price. Like this is a $400 mixer for a tilt head and I'm looking like I'm just not getting the performance out of it when we were making those cookies when I started putting that flour in that I really want to see in more of a luxury kind of appliance. It has the luxury look and feel to it, but it doesn't necessarily have the luxury performance in its mixing action. And we clearly saw that on the dough hook. The dough hook is a complete fail to me. The dough hook is a very poor shape. It does not need dough. I would do a better job on the board than that mixer that did, and that is a $400 mixer for a stand mixer. I am completely and totally disappointed in this mag. And to be honest with you, after moving it to the Artisan, that gives me this feeling at the end of this test that I do not want to use a tilt head on bread. People do it all the time, but the Artisan didn't perform that much better. It worked the head too much, and that C hook is just not a great design and not efficient kneading design for a dough hook. When we got up to the Pro 600, we had that spiral dough hook. That sucker was going around nice. This is a loud, like metal on metal sounding mixer. But on the end of the day, it did the job where the other ones just didn't do that. So um, my opinion of the Smeg, I give it a C and I would say, leave it on the shelf. If you like this video, please subscribe below and leave me a comment and a like. Visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. You can also catch me on social media, Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. If you want to chat about the Smeg go, or any of these mixers, join my Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. We will be having a lot to say about what happened in this test on my Facebook group. Also, you can catch me on Instagram at Cooking with Amy. Thank you.